um, so now, okay, so now we're like, we got it under contract, all right? We finally got something under contract. And so now you're moving on to stage two, okay? So stage two is funding and onboarding. Okay, funding and onboarding. Okay, so this is two different things. Oh yeah, I was gonna say too, on this one here, stage one, if you join the coaching program, we have a boot camp on February 4th and 5th. Only students can come to my boot camps, okay? But if you're in, if you're interested, we have a boot camp just on this. So my boot camps are all based on the different the find them, fund them, run them is what it is. But this boot camp is right here. It's coming up in just the next couple of weeks. Okay. And then stage two is funding and onboarding. Okay. So funding. This is this is where we can talk about you, know, you have it under contract and so you're like okay we have it under contract now what and so now you have to get out there and start talking to lenders and we'll I'll make a list of all the things that you can do but just know that commercial real estate is asset-based lending right so it's, so lenders most lenders from banks are you know they're, they're going to look at like how much money is this asset making right that's what they're going to value the prop the property as so funding, you can go to like SBA and you can do local banks, okay? And these are going in like, you know, nationwide bank, I mean, just any banks, but SBA, local banks, and they're gonna want P&Ls, balance sheets and stuff like this. Now SBA does projected base uh, lending, right? Projected base lending means like, it could possibly make this much. All right, but it's not making that much right now. And then you have to do like a whole bunch of just BS, right? On like what, and like just create this whole package, this visual of like, why should SBA give you this money? Because it's not making that much. And actually I know that because we're going through this right now. Okay, on one of our deals. So SBA, local banks, all right. And then also you, you can ask like, okay, do I need to syndicate this? Is it like a large deal that I should be syndicating, right? Or not? Or, um, and then, or you could do um, partners, right? Should I partner with this deal? Like, you know, should I do something like that? Or you could find private money. Can you find somebody to lend you the money to purchase it? Right, so that's something that we do that you can do. Um, all right, and then you can do a fund. You could do your own money. You could do cash. Right. So here's some of the different ways that you can fund your deal. Right now, funding for us is is um, in a boot camp in the coaching program, uh, and it's in May. Remember, because I said. Find them, fund them, run them. So find them is in February. May is funding and run, run them. The management part is in September. That's how we're going to do our, our, our storage nerd stuff. But we'll just do like two full days of like, how can I find money for these deals, right? We did, oh yeah, I did. I forgot to put owner financing. It's so funny. One of my students right now is buying a, buying a facility subject to. And another one of my students is buying the facility as a contract for deed. A contract for deed, contract for deed, which really means wraparound mortgage, okay? So these are all things that we get you into the, into the coaching program, okay? But just so you know, this is all the ways that you can fund, and we will talk about that in the bootcamp, okay? And then also, so you have it under contract, and of course, you got to find money to close the deal, right? The goal of stage two is to close the property, right? To close the property. All right, you want to buy it and own it, right? You got to find the funding for it. You can't go like it's not like residential. You can't go and get like, you know, pre approved or whatever, right? You have to like have the, the, the asset and then take it to the bank and then they look at it, okay? That's why you have to do it in the onboarding stage. And we call this the onboarding stage. 
So the onboarding stage, and then also during onboarding, the goal of onboarding is to be able to take payments on day one after you close the property, right? So you have to be able to take payments day one of owning the property. Okay, so, you know, a lot of people don't think about that, like, but essentially you need to be able to take payments. So like, you, you don't want to, if you don't do the onboarding process, by on, if you don't do this until after you close, this process right here could take a month to two months. This is getting your software up and running, getting your website, you know, getting all your marketing stuff ready, getting your phones and like all this stuff ready. And if you don't do that before, then essentially you're just like screwing yourself over, right? Because you want to like within that first week that you close on a property, you want to be able to close. All right. You want to be able to you not know, you want to be able to take payments. You want to be able to take payments. And so um, that is like, you know, and actually, so, and then we have, we actually go over this in the running part, in the running boot camp, and we have like an onboarding checklist that we give to all the students. And then they go through and they're like, do we, and then basically it's, it's the onboarding checklist that we use internally. So my husband created it because there's just so much stuff. There's like 50 items on that list right? It's like all this stuff that you have to do, you know? So, but this, but the main thing is, is being able to take payments and you want to get your software set up and the software, the onboarding process could take a month or two months. I mean, depending on which one that you use, right? And um, so you really want to get this started like ASAP. As soon as you get it under contract, you start really kind of going out and looking at all the softwares and then picking the one and then just start focusing on that one, right? Okay. And getting that set up. So that's stage two. And I saw Anita, you asked, is there a minimum credit score you need to have? I mean, they look at your credit score. All right. So like, I think it's like 630 or something like that. You know, credit is like important, but it's not like a, the most important thing, right? You know, uh, you know, about the deal, the income, how, how safe is it? How much of a risk does the bank have to take? with the risk with you, but also the risk with the asset itself, you know? So that's really, that's really the key, okay?